Okay, hello everybody. Let's get started on 6-1 and 6-2. So 6-1, we're only going to do the first objective. We'll go through it fairly quickly, and then we'll dive right into 6-2. So 6-1 is polynomial functions. And so objective one here, we're just going to be classifying our polynomials. Okay, so polynomial, polynomial function, degree, standard form, and degree of a polynomial, all things that we're going to talk about. Okay. Real quick, let's do these skill check problems. You should know how to do all of these. So pause the video, try those six real quick. Good luck. Okay, let's dive right in. A monomial is an expression that is either a real number, a variable, or a product of real numbers and variables with whole number exponents. Okay, so the key on this one is whole number exponents on this one. So things like 5 polynomial. How about 5x? Sure. How about 5x squared? No problem. Plus 3x. Still good. Plus 2. No problem. What if we said negative 2? Okay. No good. So you can't have negatives in your exponents in the power up here. And also they need to be whole numbers. All right. So if I had x to the one half here, also no good. All right. So let's jump in here and see what the standard form is. The standard form is when the powers are in the right order, 3, 2, 1, and then this is x to the 0. And the degree is the largest power you can find. So the degree in this problem would be 3. Okay. So the degree of a polynomial, the largest degree of any term of the polynomial. The degree of each term is just a power. So 3, 2, 1. Okay, so here's just a quick chart here if you want to organize all of these terms. So we really don't go past uh, to the fifth degree, a quintic, quartic. We've talked about cubics before and quadratics a lot, linears a lot. Keep going. All right, so write each polynomial in standard form, then classify it by degree and by number of terms. So if the original problem here was negative 7x plus 5x to the fourth, we need to put it in the right order. So biggest power first, 5x to the fourth, minus the 7x. Okay, so our degree is 4, and it has two terms. This is a quartic, because it's to the fourth, binomial, two terms. All right, let's put this one in order here. So 3x cubed, the largest, all the way down to the smallest power, 2x to the first. The term with the largest degree is 3x cubed. Our degree here is 3, all right? And this is a trinomial, 1, 2, 3 terms, and it's a cubic since it's degree of 3, so a cubic trinomial. All right, three for you to try. Try those 1, A, B, and C. Write it in standard form, then classify it by degree and by number of terms. All right, we're done with 6-1. Uh, we're moving on to 6-2, polynomials and linear factors. All right, so we'll need to analyze the factored form of a polynomial and then write the polynomial from its zeros. A bunch of things we're going to go through here, relative max and relative minimum, factor theorem, multiple zero, and multiplicity. All right, factor each quadratic expression. Those are your skills checks to start, and then find each product. Take a second, try those six problems, come back, we'll move into 6-2. All right, first example. If I have this expression, can I write it in standard form? We're going to need to FOIL this all the way out. So we're going to start by multiplying these two together. We can do that. That's x squared plus 1x, and 2 more x is plus 3x plus 2. But then we need to multiply this thing by the x plus 3. So a couple different ways we can do this. I want to introduce the box method, which I believe we've seen before in class. We're going to multiply x squared plus 3x plus 2 times x plus 3. I'm going to write the x plus 3 down on this side of the box and make a little chart that's just going to line up what we're multiplying. So in this box here, we're going to go x squared times x and get x cubed. We'll go 3x times the x and get 3x squared and so on, lining up all of our options, like so. 
And the nice thing about this is that your like terms are going to be on a diagonal. So we have x cubed plus 6x squared plus 11x plus 6. And there's your polynomial in standard form. Give that a shot yourself. Understanding check number one. Okay, let's go the other direction. Let's factor this. Now the key on this is we really only need to, we only really know so far how to factor things if they're squared. But in this problem we've got an x cubed. But luckily all the terms have an x. And actually we could factor out a 2 as well. So let's take a 2x out front first. And we're left with x squared plus 5x plus 6. And then let's factor this trinomial. The 2x is still out front. And we're left with what multiplies to 6 and adds to 5? 2 and 3. And we have written this in factored form. So remember, this is going to be standard form. This would be factored form. Give it a shot yourself. Understand check number 2. Okay, let's take a look at this problem. Several popular models of carry-on luggage have a length 10 inches uh, greater than their depth. All right, so let's just write some things down as we go here. Length equals depth plus 10. All right, and to comply with airline regulations, the sum of the length, the width, and the depth may not exceed 40 inches. So length plus width plus depth has to be less than or equal to 40 inches. All right, assume that the sum of the length, width, and depth is 40. All right, so they're saying not less than, but now we're just going to say equal to 40. Graph the function relating volume V to depth x. Okay, so what that means here is that we need to write an equation where it's v equals and the only variable on the other side is an x. So we know now they said the depth is x. So now we know that L is x plus 10. So let's see if we can come up with an equation for the volume. We know the volume of a cube is length times width times height, or in this case depth. Let's see if we can replace all of these with x's. We know that length is x plus 10. We know the depth right here. Let's substitute this one. And we know the depth is just x. But what about the width? Okay, We can get the width from over here. Because if we know that length is x plus 10 plus the width plus x, and that equals 40, we can move this around and get w by itself. So let's subtract. Here we've got negative 2x. And let's subtract the 10 plus 30. So we could write this as 30 minus 2x. All right, so that's our equation. We're going to go ahead and graph this thing. I've already got this up on Desmos. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, here it is. I'm going to turn it on. x times x plus 10 times 30 minus 2x. And what we see here is just a vertical line. That's a little odd. So what's the problem here? If you said we aren't zoomed out enough, you've got it exactly. So zoom out a little bit. We can see them. But we're really going to have to zoom out a lot. And I'm going to go into the graph settings and change my y-axis because this needs to be changed by a lot. And it turns out we need to go past 2,000. I did this a little earlier. And there we go. Here is our graph going up and down, curving right like this. All right, so let's take a look. And the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are negative 10. 0 and 15. What do they represent? Those are numbers that would cause our volume to be 0. Okay? So if the depth was 15, the volume would be 0. Okay? That's because it would have a depth of 15. Remember that the length is 10 more than that, so the length is 25. And then that would leave nothing left for the width. The width would be zero. So that would be a very skinny uh, piece of luggage. All right, part B, describe a realistic domain. This portion right here is where the volume is positive. So I think the domain should be between zero for x and 15 for x. All right, so our domain is going to be zero is less than x is less than 15. Why not equal? Because we don't want to have a volume of zero. All right, what's the maximum possible volume? That's this point right up here. The volume is 20, uh, sorry, 2052.2 cubic, what is this, inches, cubic inches. And what are the corresponding dimensions? The depth is going to be 8.93, which makes the length 
18.93. And then so double that is going to be 39 point, what do we have here? 86, negative plus 30. So if I did that correctly, check me on this one, 9.86 for your width. Okay, And a little bit of rounding off there. That's why these don't add up to exactly zero. All right, a lot going on there. See if you can deal with understanding check number three. Okay, on we go. Let's introduce relative maxima and relative minima. Just a little note here. Minima is the plural for minimums. There's no such thing as minimums. You're going to say minima when you're talking about more than one. All right, so the relative minimum right here is the lowest possible value that turns over, okay? So even though these points here are a little bit lower, they have lower y values, they're not at the bottom of a little valley if you want to think about it this way. Same thing with the relative maximum, okay? Right here is where it turns over. And just one other thing, all the x-intercepts here, we're also going to look at them and call them zeros because the value of the function there is zero, right? If you plugged in that x number, the y value turns into zero. Okay, so this is the factor theorem. This is important. The expression x minus a is a linear factor of a polynomial, which means that you can write it as a factor, okay? If and only if the value of a is a zero. So if you cross the x-axis, you get to write it in the parentheses like this. Really helpful because we can do things like this. And the zeros of this, we know that a zero happens at 2, the opposite, not negative 2, negative 1, the opposite, and negative 3. If we were to graph this, negative 1, it crosses here. Negative 3, it crosses here. And positive 2, it crosses here. And since I know this is a positive out front, I know that it's going to start low and finish going up. Okay? Start down here in the negative and finish up here in the positive. If this was a negative out front, then the graph would look something like that. Okay? All right, see if you can do problem for A and B. Okay, now we want to write a polynomial given the zero. So we know that y equals, we know, x plus 2 because negative 2 is a zero. We know x minus 3 because 3 is a 0. And x minus 3 again, which we could write as x minus 3 squared, but we're trying to expand this whole thing into standard form, so we're going to need to multiply it out anyway. So x plus 2, let's foil these two together. Should be quick with this one, x squared minus 6x minus, sorry, plus 9. And then let's go to our box method, x plus 2 x squared minus 6x plus 9, and fill it in. x cubed, negative 6x squared, 9x, 2x squared, negative 12x, and 18. So our polynomial in standard form would be x cubed plus, sorry, minus 4x squared, minus 3x plus 18. Give 5 a shot. Okay, example six, finding the multiplicity of a zero. So on this one, let's look at what multiplicity means. While the polynomial function in example five has three zeros, it has only two distinct zeros at negative two and three. If we look back here, three repeated itself, right? So if a linear factor of a polynomial is repeated, then the zero is repeated. A repeated zero is called a multiple zero. A multiple zero has a multiplicity equal to the number of times it repeats. Okay, so if I had x plus 3 squared, it repeats twice. So this would be negative 3 with a multiplicity of 2. All right, in this problem here, let's factor this. This factors down into x squared plus 4. Uh, sorry. How's the x squared? Didn't see that one. Let's factor out the x squared. Sorry about that. And we're left with x squared plus 6x plus 8, which factors again to x squared, x plus 4, and x plus 2. So what are our zeros? Negative 4, 
negative 2, and 0 from this one with a multiplicity of 2 because of the square. All right, 6a and b a shot. Okay, big summary here. So oh, equivalent statements about polynomials. Negative 4 is a solution. Negative 4 is an x-intercept. Negative 4 is a 0. x plus 4, the opposite of the negative 4, is a factor. These are four ways of saying the exact same thing. All right? So we're always looking for the x-intercepts. 1, 2, and 3. These are called the solutions or the zeros, and the opposite will be the factor. That's it. Good luck with that. Good luck with those problems, and we'll see you in class next time.